That's all I do. I'm not one of these talk show hosts who goes on a podium and starts to scream and yell and thinks that I have an effect. I am not running for office. I have no political power whatsoever. All I can do is put out ideas and hope to God others act on them. And I, I have to say, well, we tried very hard in the last election to get some conservatives in there. And look what happened. They were compromised by Boehner and McConnell. They basically put out of business because they're part and parcel of the Obama machine. You know that. The whole system has to, has to go. And, and in fact, that uh, uh, I'd like to read you something. It's very short. All right. Well, look, if we're going to get into an, a long reading thing, you know, I'm going to lose my audience, even though it might be brilliant. I know radio well enough to know people don't like to hear listeners read something. Give it to us in a sentence or so. Go ahead, please. It is the right, it is the duty to throw off such government and provide new guards for future security. I, I've heard you denigrate the founding fathers, and they were better than us. And the reason they were better than us is because... It certainly wasn't approaching 350 million, was it? And what was the ethnic uh, uh, background of the dominant... Uh, what was the dominant eth ethnic background at the time of the founding documents? Mostly European. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that answer your question? You're dealing with not apples and oranges, but a historical reality versus a current reality. It's two different worlds. The rules may be wonderful and noble and idealized, an ideal but you cannot use those rules and get any effect today as witnessed by what we have seen when we've tried to play by the rules with the republicans so in other words what i'm saying to you is using the rules doesn't work of course not that's why it is the duty of the citizen to replace this government in fact well, we didn't, didn't we replace them peacefully last october last november didn't we replace them peacefully? And look what we got. We got the drunk and the gobbler. The illusion of having a representative government. This is anything but a representative government. Well, you're, you're preaching not to the choir, but to the master of the choir. I know what you're saying, but I'm coming up with something else, and you're disagreeing with me. I'm saying shut it down. I'm saying the only thing that will stop the influx of immigrants, the only thing that will stop this group of, uh, of self emoliating politicians from doing this to us is shutting the government down and that means forcing the republicans to do it they can do it they have the power to do it we can force the republicans to do it we cannot force the democrats to do anything they are beyond the pale they are all corrupt they're all anti-american they all hate themselves and hate the country and i'm telling you that we have the power with the republican party to shut it down and only by shutting the government down can we stop this insanity of this madman in the White House who wants to bring in 100,000, 200,000, whatever he wants. Syrian men? Why? Why is he doing that? Why is he forbidding Christians from Syria to enter the country? Why is he kicking Syrian asylees out of the country while bringing in Syrian Muslims? Who are these Syrian men? Where did they come from? Why are 80% of these refugees single males? Are they members of ISIS? Is he bringing in an army to overthrow the, uh, the people? What is he trying to do? So at the same time he's bringing in 100,000, no one knows how many, Syrian males of military age, he's moving to disarm the American population. You want to paint a scary picture, a crazy picture, a conspiratorial picture? Go ahead, I just did. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Is the uh, Savage Nation? I see that the so-called conservative media has turned on Trump completely now, and they're backing uh, Ben Carson. Oh yeah, Breitbart suddenly in Carson's camp. They've found the hero they love here. I don't know why they hate Trump. I don't know who at uh, Breitbart is jealous of Trump, but somebody there must be jealous of him because suddenly Carson's their hero. You and I both know that Carson may be a fine man, but you know he's not electable. I'll tell you right now, he is not electable. He's like a second stringer. This guy could be a vice president. He could be the head of HHS. He could not be a president. He's not going to win. He's not going to win. He doesn't have the charisma. And there's a number of reasons he'll never win. And why they're backing him is simple, because they're, uh, they're jealous of Trump. 
like most of the people out there who, are, who don't like Trump, they're jealous of him. And that's that. Now, what do you want to talk about? Let's see. We got up here. Uh, Ernest's words. Oh, there's more from this hollow man, Josh Ernst. You got to listen to this. You got to listen to clips 11 and 12 put together. Here is the uh, Goebbels of our time, Josh Ernst, saying things that would be laughable if anyone knew what he was actually talking about. Listen to 11 and 12. I don't think President Putin is playing chess. He's playing checkers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say that because he's making a series of tactical decisions and that you know are more leading than him. to a starkly negative strategic You know that. Which is well, that never shot a BB a gun knows more than Putin. to ramp up their support for the Assad regime. Listen to this Russia idiot. is being sucked into uh, a sectarian civil war, uh, essentially right, a quagmire right. the new, the new, so yeah, that poses a, quagmire, a whole sectarian. set of risks to Russia's yeah. interests, not just in the region, but back at home. Certainly oh, yeah, right. uh, yeah. making Russia uh, the target of uh, Sunni Muslims. In See, he's Syria threatening Russia. and in Did Russia, you catch that? that are quite catch angry that? that the Russians have backed up the murderous, regi murderous regime of Bashar al-Assad. You know, when this is all over, there has to be war crimes trials. And Josh Ernst has to go on the docket like, like Goebbels. Even though Goebbels committed suicide with cyanide, Josh Ernst has to be tried for crimes against humanity for being such a liar. What he just said is astonishing when you think about it. Here's a Potts who never shot a BB gun who's telling Putin that his st strategy is wrong. That's number one. Number two, he's threatening Russia by saying Russia's going to become the target of Sunni Muslims in Syria and Russia, which means he and his sorority under the uh, president of the United States will make certain that the Sunni world turns on Russia. They're going to conspire in order to make certain that Russia now has problems with Sunni Muslims both within their own nation and outside their nation. Do you have any idea how deadly this man really is, this little spokesmouth Josh Ernst? He didn't just give an opinion. He read a script written for him uh, by President Jarrett. I believe President Jarrett just wrote that script. And I believe President Jarrett runs the Muslim Brotherhood. And I believe that the Muslim Brotherhood has infiltrated the government to such an extent that that explains virtually everything that they are doing. Yes, it's President Jarrett who just wrote that script for the spokesmouth, Josh Ernst. Now, most of you don't know who President Jarrett is. She's that demure little lady from Chicago who seems to be in favor of nukes for Iran seems to be in favor of attacking Russia and creating a new Cold War because Russia does not uh, kowtow to her belief system. She's a good friend of the entire so-called progressive regime of Barack Obama going back at least 25 to 30 years. She's part of a, not Troika, but seven sisters. If you study them very carefully, there are seven sisters, seven so-called progressive sisters from Chicago. The first lady is one of them, Valerie, Valerie Jarrett is another. The others have names. They are the sorority running the world. Barack Obama is the spokesman for the sorority. They are the ones who have blundered. They are the ones who overthrew Gaddafi and unleashed the whirlwind out of Libya. They are the ones who try to overthrow the legitimate government of Egypt and reinstall the Muslim Brotherhood. They are the ones who have put out one message after another against Russia and have condemned Putin and made him into a monster beyond anything you can imagine simply because he wants to express his own national interests in his sphere of influence, by the way. Yes, that's a real crime to a progressives, even so-called conservative progressives who are really progressives in conservative clothing who attack Putin saying, why, he's just expanding his national interest. Wouldn't you wish that Obama would do that for us? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome to the show. I know this. I have, I have hypoglycemia. i got to watch my blood sugar very carefully. Nobody has the energy I have in radio. You know that. Three hours? Three hours a day? Radio? 21 years? I do it. I do it well. But right now, the top of the head feels like a piece of it should be removed, and uh, Ben Carson should go in and leave a piece of cotton in there. That's they're trying to smear him now. They left cotton in a child's brain. That's how low they'll go. Nothing about Benghazi. Nothing about the corruption of the Clintons. Nothing about Obama being mentally imbalanced and should be in a nut house. Now that Ben Carson left cotton in a kid's head, 
This is the press that we have in America. You know something they wouldn't have gotten away with this in Russia during the Soviet Union era is Vestia wouldn't have gone to this level of of uh, what Woodpecker? What's his name? I forget his name. I call him Woodpecker. Jake Tapper. I call Jake Woodpecker. Why? Because he has the brains of a woodpecker that was shot with a BB gun, but he knows how to, uh, to tie a uh, Windsor knot. Hillary Rotten Clinton says the jail was the right thing for the Kentucky clerk. She's really groping, man, for the lowest level of the American voter. She's going for the abortionists. That's that's her base is the abortionists. I mean, this she has to talk about when the Supreme, when the Pope himself said it was the wrong thing. Hillary Rotten Clinton today said the jail was the right thing for a Kentucky clerk who refused to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Who is she appeasing here? Who is she appealing to? Speaking in Iowa? What group was she speaking in front of? The abortion industry of America? Let's see, that would be AIA. Yeah, the AIA, the abortion industry of America. Euthanasia, euthanasiasts of America. This is sickening what she is. This woman is far worse than anybody could imagine. Clinton spoke at Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa. Where is Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa? Who was in the, who was in the audience? The radical feminist who took it over and introduced Wiccan into the university? Tore down the crosses and converted the, the chapel of the university into a, a Wiccan haven, Claven? That's who she's speaking to. Clinton said people are entitled to their private beliefs, but that when you take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States, that is your job. Oh, really? How about the hidden emails, the 30,000 hidden emails? That isn't in the title of your job? That wasn't your job title? Or how about killing Gaddafi when he begged for his life and said, don't kill me because if I die, you're going to have chaos here? Wasn't that part of your constitutional responsibilities was to not have him ordered killed? But that's not what I wanted to talk about, even though I just did. The modality in America today is all women are like dogs, just like the men. Hey, I can do anything a man wants to do. I can go sleep around and go out till 4.30 in the morning and wind up in a doorway with my panties in my pocketbook. Hey, I'm free. I'm free. I can do anything I want. This is America, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that doorway. Dermatologist from Inhasset. Three children, lovely husband, winds up in a doorway with the head against the door. Unbelievable contusions on the neck. And the drug dealer she was with doesn't know how it happened. He pulled it down in the doorway. The NYPD has reached such a point that they don't even arrest the guy who left her in the doorway on a videotape. What in the world is going on? They showed, they have a videotape of a guy pulling the, the dermatologist downstairs after she's coked up, according to the sir, leaving her in a the doorway. They interview him and they let him go. What is that about? What kind of police work is this? And you want me to worry about the refugees Obama wants to bring into the country? Oh, my God, 200,000 of them. The borders, I say, shut down this government, my friends, until the borders are secure. Just shut them down. You know, the Republicans are such cowards. I mean, what do you expect? You take a look. We know Boehner. I'm not going to say Boehner and McConnell like it's the first time you heard it. You know who they are. You know exactly who they are. They're sold out, compromised losers. They're bought and sold. They got what they wanted. Mc McConnell negotiated the whole deal last year just for some coal job in Kentucky. He got the coal and suddenly he capitulated all the way over to the to the left side, right? Boehner was never anywhere but where he was supposed to be, which was inside Obama's rear pocket. So when Obama sat down, it sounded like a whoopee cushion coming out of Boehner's mouth. In other words, they put a, a, a Boehner doll inside Obama's rear pocket. So every time Obama sat down to give a speech, you heard Boehner squeak, as I say, like a like a like a whoopee cushion. So that's that's the speaker of the other other party. Uh, unbelievable to me. But there are people in the Republican Party who could shut this government down. And I say shut her down. Just shut it down. Shut it down. Not a dollar. We control the purse strings. You're not getting a dime. All your, all your departments are shut down. I don't care if the post office doesn't deliver a letter. I don't care if nothing works. We're shutting it down until you shut that border. It's that simple. I am not going to let the psychopath in the White House flood 200,000 Muslims from Syria into this country. End of story. Why is that a bad policy? Tell me what's wrong with my idea of shut it down. I want to know. I mean, I'll tell you about slamming the door shut on the refugees that Obama wants to flood America with. I will tell you about that. I will tell you my plan. Straight out, shut the borders, shut the government down, seal the borders, shut the government down, close it down. Shut it down. Forget about shutting the government down. Shut everything down. Lock it down. I'm not going to tell you that if Obama, the madman, the psycho, gets away with bringing in 200,000 refugees from the Middle East, this country is gone. The man is a madman, a maniac. Nobody wants them here. He only wants them here for the votes and to change the demographics because he hates the, well, how shall I put it? 
How shall I put who he hates so much that he wants to fundamentally change the demographics of America to the 